Hey everyone and welcome back to another Barbecue Bros video. In this video, <clears throat> what I'm going to be doing is walking you through uh, how I slow smoke a uh, Boston butt on my uh, Weber kettle. As you've seen in a couple of my other videos, I've got the large model kettle, the 26.75 inch. It's plenty big enough to, to smoke on, to do some slow cooking on. Uh, a friend of mine is graduating from college this weekend and she um, she uh, asked if I would do the cooking for her party. So I've got uh, this guy right here, which is uh, over uh, 10 pounds, it's like 10.2 pounds. And then I've got some chicken and a whole bunch of uh, spare ribs that I trimmed down to St. Louis style. So I've got a whole bunch of stuff going, but um, in this video, I'm specifically just going to walk you through from start to finish. Uh, how I'm going to slow cook this guy on my kettle. So the first part, uh, we're going to go ahead and get this guy prepped. And what I like to do is I like to inject uh, Boston butts and, and picnics. I just think it gives a little, <clears throat> a little bit more, more uh, moisture uh, to the final product once it's pulled and you're enjoying some pulled pork sandwiches. I just think it tastes better. Uh, there's plenty of guys that say there's, there's really no need to inject. I just like to do it. So, uh, so that's what we're going to do. <clears throat> All this is right here is apple juice, water, sugar, salt, and a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. And I just put it in a little shaker and just shake it all up. You can just, uh, it's on my blog. Uh, the recipe's on my blog site or you can just uh, Google it and, and find your own. Or you can just mix a whole bunch of stuff together. So this, as you've seen in some of my other videos, is my... Uh, 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 Bayou uh, Classic uh, Steel Food Injector. The one, as I've been using it for a while now, the one thing I wanted to quickly point out is these holes get clogged up, and they get clogged up with with meat or um, maybe some of the salt, whatever it is. But it's kind of a pain to keep those cleared out. And I'm trying to figure out a way to to clean this guy better. I mean, this thing just you know pops off just like that there's not much to it but I have been noticing it's been getting clogged and um, despite several attempts to clean it out I was <laughs> using the end of one of these uh, uh, little flossers you know that you use for your teeth and the end of it's like a toothpick thing I was using that and it kinda unclogged it but uh, some of it's still a little clogged so anyways just a heads up in case you guys are looking to get one of these that that does happen so let's go ahead and get straight to this. You just want to uh, put a little bit in and then pull it out and change angles. I go through this in a couple other videos, but there's so many different, um, you know, this bud is the, the muscle tissue. It just goes all kind of different directions that you really want to just kind of Pull it out a little bit like I'm doing, push some more in as I'm easing all the way back out. So I just got it into about five or six different areas. Alright, and I kind of learned the hard way when I first started messing around with this. Definitely keep your hand over it like this or the stuff will go spraying all over the kitchen. do a couple more get that good and full if you zoom in here um, when I get this in here I'll go nice and slow I mean you'll see the meat kind of expanding out as I start to push in so see it's kind of bulging out there and then I'm just gonna switch angles And what's happening, you're hearing those little air pockets. This thing is getting jammed. So I haven't been too happy with this guy. That was a good one right there. I got that one pretty full. So this one's nice and full. So we'll hit this one more time. You certainly cannot overdo this. I mean, you're going to be cooking, you know, about this size for anywhere between 12 and 15 hours, depending on your temp. So... 
There's nothing wrong at all with you know getting all that liquid in there like that. So I think that's probably good enough. So we'll take this and uh, just set this over here. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is I like to put a nice coat of mustard on it. And as I've talked about before, all this is doing is adding a base coat for the rub to stick to. And during the cook, all of the mustard uh, flavor is going to completely cook away. You're not going to actually taste the mustard on the end product. Just kind of a an old trick that's been passed down uh, by a bunch of barbecue legends that started doing this a long time ago, and not quite sure uh, who first came up with it, but it works really good, and, and I like to do it. Oops, this guy's almost out. You really don't have to go too heavy on the mustard here. Just want to get a little bit on there. As you can see, this isn't a, I mean, this is pretty much a perfect bottom butt. I mean, that fat cap is just, you know, covers almost the entire bottom. It's about uh, eight to a quarter of an inch, so that's going to break down during the cook. All right, so we got all this nice and covered with mustard here. Wash my hands off just a little bit. Go ahead and shed these gloves. <clears throat> now what I do is uh, this rub right here, I have a bunch of different rubs I like to use, but this is one I bought. This is from the Simply Marvelous Barbecue Company in California. In my opinion, they make the best rubs out there. Uh, you know, um, I order them in bulk, so they're, they're not too bad if you, you know, go in with a buddy or you know, you can get like 10 pounds of it for like 50 60 dollars this is their apple rub it has dehydrated apple powder in it uh, it is the most amazing rub I've ever had I love to use it on pork uh, so butts like this picnic spare ribs baby backs and um, you can try it on other things but it definitely goes best with pork so I like to use a spoon so I'm not you know touching the meat and then coming back and contaminating the rub so um, as most of you know with a with a butt you want to go fairly heavy because you want to get a good bark while it's cooking. You want to try to get all sides. Um, I wish you guys could smell this rub. I mean it smells like um, it's got like uh, just some real sweet spices in it to go along with the apple. It just smells amazing. This, this is going to be really good. I'm actually going to drain a little of this juice off. Alright, we'll flip that guy. And you can see this guy's huge. Had him on sale up at the local grocery store for about a dollar. 30 pounds, so I was happy with that. Get all the sides right here. And get this back side right here, and we're just about done. And you can also, right before you throw it on the, the cooker, you can put a little bit more on there if you want. Uh oh, here's a little bit on this side too, I missed. It is, um, it's a Friday right now, so Friday night around 9 o'clock. This guy's going to, the party is Sunday, so this guy's going to be hitting my smoker tomorrow night. So I want it to sit a good 24 hours. In the fridge. And then all I do is I take a garbage bag. Grab this beast, 
A little tricky to do with one hand here. Get it slid up in there like that. I'm gonna hit my hand one more time. And just take it. Get the air out and just give it a spin. And there you go, a 10 pound boss and butt rubbed down with the Simply Marvelous Apple Rub. And we will pick back up tomorrow when I show you how I have the kettle set up for a, a nice long 12 to 15 hour cook. All right, so it is now Saturday, about midday, and just got the kettle set up for the cook, uh, which will be later on tonight, but I just wanted to go ahead and get the kettle all set up. So um, just wanted to quickly walk you through how, uh, how I go about slow cooking on the kettle. So what I do is I take, um, uh, kind of depending on what size bag you have, but about half to three quarters of a bag of charcoal, and you basically just bank them all the way um, around just one side of the kettle. And as you can see right here, I've got, this is actually a pretty large piece of pecan wood I've got buried underneath the coals, and uh, some other pieces kind of buried down in there. And I love to use pecan wood when I'm slow cooking uh, really any kind of pork. So what, what I'll do in, uh, in a little bit uh, later on tonight when I get the fire started and we p pick back up then, I basically just get uh, a small handful of coals lit and I'll put them on this side. And then during the cook, it'll just slowly catch all the other coals going all the way around the other side. This right here is just a pan of water to kind of just... Um, help control the temperature a little bit and it just um, I'm a big fan of cooking with water some guys um, debate that that you don't really need to but I like to I think it just puts more moisture in the air and helps make the meat more tender uh, and then right underneath the pan I've just got some tin foil laid out uh, as you saw um, in the last part of this video the butt I'm cooking is uh, over 10 pounds so it's pretty big so just in case any of the other juices fall but most of those juices will be falling straight into the pan and uh, and uh, just helping um, kick more flavor up inside this kettle so that's my setup and we will pick back up later on once I get the the fire started okay guys it's about 9 30 10 o'clock Saturday night and um, I just got the butt put on uh, as you see down here, sorry it's it's dark so I'm doing the best I can here, but as you see down here I put a, about a half a chimney load of lit uh, charcoal briquettes on and those will basically, uh, during the cook, wrap all the way around to the back here in the, in the kettle. And like I said earlier, I've got some wood buried down there and I wanted to quickly show you my setup. So we've uh, got... Um, cords going all over the place. Um, we've got two uh, grill grate probes right here and then I got a probe in the butt. Um, the uh, one of the grill grates is coming over here to my DigiQ and the DigiQ is hooked up down here. Uh, there's the fan. I uh, showed in a previous video uh, this adapter that I installed on the kettle so the digi -Q is going to control it this entire cook and then over here is my uh, Maverick ET732 barbecue thermometer and it has a food probe and a pit probe coming out of it so you see those two wires that's the one going into the butt and then the other one that's on the grate down there and so uh, basically uh, I've I've slow cooked on this guy before and this thing's gonna go all night long all I'll do is at one point during the night I'll wake up and just look at the receiver the Maverick receiver that's sitting on my nightstand and just check and make sure the the pit temperature is still riding good um, if I come down here and click the pit button See, I've got it set, uh, hit up. I've got it set to 235, so it's 108 right now just because I got the lid wide open. 
But um, so the DigiQ is going to control this guy the whole way, and I will pick back up first thing in the morning and show you how everything's going. All right, it is eight o'clock Sunday morning, and I threw the butt on. I think it was uh, right around nine o'clock last night, uh, and. Uh, like I said, I, I was planning on sleeping all the way through the night. I did set my my phone to go off at 3 a.m. And um, all I really did was just rolled over and uh, turned the light on my nightstand on real quick and looked at the, the Maverick uh, receiver. And uh, it showed me that the kettle was right in... Uh, right at 2.35, uh, which is where I wanted it, and uh, the meat was around 150. Well, at 6 o'clock this morning, uh, I checked it again, and um, it told me that the meat was at about 158 or so, and um, so when I got up, uh, about 30 minutes ago, uh, got up about 7.30, what I did was I walked out here and um, I went ahead and pushed the uh, pit up to 250 and it's climbing up to 250 right now. You can actually see where um, the DigiQ says 242 and the Maverick says 252. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of testing on that to see... Um, uh, why that is because I actually have both the Maverick and the DigiQ pit probes right next to each other like I showed you in the last segment of this video. But there's the food temp. It's at 162. Um, I have not opened the lid yet so that's what we're getting ready to do right now. And there we go. looking pretty good so um, really nice bark on it and uh, this is how we're doing over here uh, with the fuel so not sure how well you can see this but it's only burned about halfway so there's still some wood buried down there and it still has all that to wrap around to as I showed you last night it was dark so maybe you can see it better now but there's the DigiQ probe and the Maverick probe that are basically right next to each other and then that's the Maverick food probe coming out so this thing has been completely digitally controlled and I've just been watching it from the comfort of my own bed so <laughs> uh, it's pretty nice to have these gadgets but uh, I'm you know I'm gonna let this butt get up to 195 so I'll pick back up with a video uh, when it's time to pull it off Alright guys, I just pulled the butt off a few minutes ago. Um, my hands were kind of busy. I've got three different smokers uh, going right now. So uh, I meant to, uh, to shoot a quick video of uh, showing, showing it on the grill um, at 195 right before I pulled it off. Up, but I forgot, so sorry about that. But um, uh, what I generally do is if uh, I like to let butts and picnics rest for at least a couple hours in foil but if it's going to be any longer than that uh, uh, like today it's um, uh, it's not going to be till like four or five hours later when um, my friend comes to pick all the food up so I have it double foiled and wrapped in a towel and it's just in this cooler so there it is right there so um when, uh, like I said, I pulled it off right when it hit 195 and double wrapped it in heavy, in heavy duty foil, excuse me, and um, uh, wrapped it in this towel. And it will stay piping hot for four to six hours. I've, I've had, uh, I've done a couple cooks where the butt got done. Uh, quite a bit earlier than I thought it would and had it sitting in a cooler wrapped in foil and a towel uh, for like six seven hours and it was still just piping hot uh, when it was time to pull it so we'll pick back up uh, in just a little bit when I when I go to pull it and show you what it looks like 
All right, so this is the uh, last stage of uh, um, getting this bossom butt ready for some uh, pulled pork. And so, uh, as I previously showed you, it, it's been wrapped in uh, two layers of foil and this towel. And I mean, when I pick this guy up just a couple minutes, I mean, it's just piping hot even through the towel. And it's been sitting in this towel now for about four hours. So that shows you how long you can keep these things piping hot. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove the towel. Get this thing unwrapped. And look at that. I mean, that just looks absolutely amazing. So let me go ahead and uh, get this guy on this pan. All right, and uh, so basically what I do is uh, this thing smells so good. Really nice bark. This is a fairly um, thick layer of fat. Uh, let me... This thing is super, super hot, but this top layer right here, there's a lot of fat on this right here, okay? So if you watch other videos, a lot of guys just kind of peel that top fat layer off right there to see lots of fat right there. Right there, see? So all that, I just kind of peel that back, take all that, and that's straight in the trash. That's fine up there. I mean, you can take some of that off. That's just pure fat right there. All right, and then the bone is over here. And look at that. I mean, <laughs> that's it. That bone comes out that easy. So that goes in the trash. And then all you really gotta do is just start taking this and uh, you can take a couple forks, whatever you want, and uh, kind of pull it apart or you can use your hands, whatever you want to do. But you can see how just incredibly easy this comes apart. And you can see that texture there. Has a nice smoke ring. If I pick up this piece right here, so right up towards the top, you've got about an eighth to a quarter inch smoke ring. That's what that dark red is. And then a little bit of bark on that. So you're gonna have some bark on some of this. And uh, um, you can, like I said, you can just take a couple forks and really start getting out of it. I mean, you can see how incredibly easy this stuff just pulls right apart. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on that and uh, get this ready for the folks that are picking it up and it's gonna be some good eating. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.